Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a bathrobe and some slippers. And grab some popcorn and buckle up. I've treated this bathrobe just like I would any other project. I've turned it inside out so I have all the seams nice and smooth, and I've got everything lined up really nice. Don't be intimidated by its size. It's just like a giant t-shirt, but a lot thicker. And I started by having it with the um, collar up, but I wasn't able to make a nice smooth spiral, so I decided to flip it over and try again this way, and it was a lot easier. So I didn't really know what to do with this giant shape. Um, so I just went with the tried and true spiral because, well, you guys know how much I love spirals. And keep in mind that this is a giant towel that is wet so it really wasn't super easy to spiral up and it's thick. Um, so just take your time and just work on making your pleats and spiral it up. Like I said, just treat it like you would a t-shirt. It's only bigger, that's all. I'm so happy to announce that Belladonna Dyes Community Tie Dye Group is over a thousand members now. We're about 50 away from 1200. So if you haven't joined the group already, I highly recommend that you do. There are a lot of very helpful people that are willing to help answer questions. Uh, the link for it is down below in the description box. It's the link that's right underneath the Etsy link. So check it out, join the group. And if you have questions for me specifically, make sure that you tag my name in it because Facebook will send me an alert and then I'm able to see it. So that spiral is looking pretty good and it's nice and tight. Now I'm going to secure it. And this is where those stretched out rubber bands are gonna come in really handy because this is one giant project. I have found that if you get a few rubber bands on the project, it sort of helps hold things in place while you continue to tighten it up. So I like to pull on all of the loose tails and tuck them into the nearest rubber band, creating a really nice tight spiral. I should mention, you know, it doesn't matter which direction your rubber bands are going. You could put them in stripes, you can make squares. I just always seem to make pie pieces out of mine. But you put rubber bands wherever you need to put them just to hold your project into place. And I am really giving it to this one. At some points, I'm using my forearm to help hold it down so I can really crank on that spiral and make it tight. While you're watching me finish tie this up, Check to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. It just takes a second, please click that subscribe button. And then also set the bell to all, that way you get notified of future uploads. But if you set it to all, you have to go into your device settings and go to YouTube and make sure that you turn on notifications. That way when I upload something new, you'll get an alert and then you can come over and check it out. Thank you so much, I really do appreciate all of you. Okay, that spiral looks pretty good. So I set it down on top of a rack, that way I can move it around from here on out. Um, it's pretty heavy and I don't want it to fall apart. And using a washable marker, I mark out my pattern. Now it's time to do something with the belt. So all I did was roll it up like a cinnamon roll. And I have found that if you get it started and then set it down on the table and roll it up, it helps keep it nice and flat. Mm -hmm. 
Since it's so small, I'm able to just secure it by using one rubber band. And that rubber band came out of the Tulip tie-dye kit. They're white. And I wish I knew what like the gauge of the rubber band is. If any of you know what number it is, like is it rubber band number 32 or whatever, please tell me because I love those rubber bands. And I've only been able to find them in the kits. For the slippers, I covered the bottom with painter's tape. And then using this very sharp X-Acto knife, I carefully cut out the edges and I'm telling you, I went very carefully. You don't want to press hard because you'll cut into the rubber or maybe even cut some of the strings. So just take your time, go slowly. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to cut the tape. Using my fingernail to score along where I want to cut made it really easy to see what I was doing. These long stretches of silence, I feel compelled to say something, even though I kind of just want to let the tutorial play out and stay timeless. Because if I talk about the holidays or Happy New Year or what I think of Dexter's finale, well, I guess I just did, didn't I? It's not timeless anymore. I just feel like you guys want me to chit chat with you. So here I am, I'm chit chatting. What did you think of Dexter's finale? Ugh. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. So I set these off with the bathrobe and I set them aside to dry for about a week. Now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the dye. Originally, I had planned on muck dyeing this project, but I don't have a container that's large enough to really sit the bathrobe down inside of it. So I had to elevate it. So I'm using the little rack basket thingies from the dollar store and I created a tin foil ice barrier. Um, all of my other cake molds were in use but if you had cake molds you can use those too. And now I'm just going to add the dye in the pieces of the pie. And for this project I chose colors that I like. This is my first bathrobe and I don't know how it's going to be. Um, so I figured if I use colors that I like and it's a disaster, well, it doesn't matter because I'll wear it. I'm going pretty heavy handed with the dye. You know, it is a towel and it's absorbent. So I do think that the dye is going to go through, but I wanna make sure that there's enough of it so that the colors are nice and vibrant. the last of the deep purple and so I want to show you guys because some of you are brand new to tie dyeing and you know this way you can see so that is a two ounce jar on the left and an eight ounce jar on the right and also um, for those of you that are old dyers look at the difference in the color so the the little two ounce jar was a much uh, more magenta type powder and now the second uh, jar is 
really more on the purple side. And I asked Dharma about that and they said that when they mix their dye, it's all very scientific. They have certain numbers that they add in, but depending upon where, you know, maybe they scooped up your particular jar, like maybe it wasn't mixed as much in that particular area, or at least that's my understanding of it. And I found that to be pretty interesting because then you, if that's the case, so like, you know, if I get one from the upper left corner of the batch and you get one from the bottom, you know, right corner of the batch, our colors could be vastly different if, if that's their answer to it. Because I personally think, you know, like when you, when you buy paint from the paint store and they mix it for you, it should be exactly the same because they use like a scientific formulation. Why isn't the dye like that too? Anyways, that just left me scratching my head, but the color is beautiful regardless, so I, I'm not gonna press the issue. Since I brought up the topic of Christmas, New Year, Dexter, I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas and did something that they enjoyed with people that they care about and got all the presents that they asked for. Well, I'm just kidding, but, and Happy New Year to all of you. So now we're into 2022 and I hope you guys are happy and thriving and creating a lot of wonderful tie dye. So I did bring up Dexter and respectfully, I don't wanna actually talk about it like in the comments. A lot of people haven't had the chance to see the whole show or the finale or anything like that. Uh, but like my previous response where I went, Err, I'll tell you what, I don't know what's going on with the writers of television shows these days, but the whole season kind of was disappointing and I'm just going to leave it right at that and you guys can just say you agree with me or don't agree with me, but please don't put the spoiler down in the, into the comments and ruin it for others because that would be like a total bummer and I don't want to have to go through and um, like delete comments. I don't want to be that type of person, but no spoilers. Let's just have fun and either agree that it was totally awesome or it completely sucked. And how many of you are watching Yellow Jackets? It comes on right after Dexter. And I didn't know at first if I was going to like it, but it's totally creepy and I love it. As always, grab a mask when you're working with your soda ash. Now, some might say, why don't you wear a mask through the whole dyeing process? Um, to be honest with you, adding the dye doesn't bother me. I've never once had any like coloration inside my nose. For instance, when I go out and work in the garden and I come in and blow my nose, I will have, you know, like muddy snot boogers. I don't have that issue with the dye. But if it bothers you, make sure you wear a mask while adding the dye and the soda ash. And then just pack on your ice. I just love the way the dye looks when the ice hits it. It's so beautiful. It's very exciting. Okay, now I'm just going to follow the same steps with the little bathrobe tie. And I'm also going to do that with the slippers. And you know, in hindsight, I should have probably added the dye to everything all at once, but I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to edit it or anything like that. So I'm just winging it and you guys are along for the ride. So the ice on the bathrobe is starting to drip. You're seeing little drips form. And I just want to point out, if you're going to share a tote with projects, you want to make sure that you give them enough space. Like if they're two totally different colors, you know, if you have a pink shirt on one side and a yellow shirt on the other, you don't want them to mix and then you'll have orange. Um, but since this is all one project, it doesn't really matter. And these over the sink strainers that I got from Amazon are amazing for uh, doing ice dyes over top of a tote. I have a link for them down below in the description box and they're a two pack and I think they're relatively affordable and I love them. I love to use them all the time. 
So check out the description box for everything that I use for tie-dye. It makes it really easy for you to go shopping. All right, now we're working on the slippers and you can't really do those in a spiral. I suppose I could do pie pieces on you know, the top part where it goes over your foot, but I just went with stripes. And I also went really heavy with the purple colors and less with the greens. And my thought process for that was because they're down on our feet, they're going to get dirty a lot quicker than the bathrobe will. So I felt like using more of the dark colors will keep them looking nicer longer. Um, at least that's what I was thinking anyways. And a lot of you would probably agree that that's a smart idea because, you know, like the inside of your shoes where your foot is, you know, you can kind of see like your footprint in there, um, kind of grungy. I didn't want that to happen with these. So anyways, that's what I was thinking. So I'm adding my jade green here, and it makes me think of my hummingbirds. Do you guys have hummingbirds where you live? I know that pretty much all of the United States have hummingbirds, uh, but they migrate away during the winter time, and right now is winter. Where I live here in the Pacific Northwest, our Anna's hummingbirds, they do not migrate. They really rely on me to keep them fed because we don't have flowers right now, you know, me and all my neighbors. And we have a ton of hummingbirds. And so I love to do tie dye. I love to do gardening and I love my hummingbirds among other things that I love. But I was considering maybe doing some recordings of the hummingbirds because we get them in the hundreds every single day. And for those of you that love hummingbirds and yours have migrated, I was wondering if you'd be interested in seeing them. I don't think I would incorporate it with the tie-dye channel necessarily though. I think I'd maybe just like create an offshoot for people to see. Um, but I love my hummingbirds and I know all of them. I, I can recognize them even when you have hundreds of them. It's crazy. And I also get deer and raccoons and just all kinds of stuff going on here in the Pacific Northwest. So would any of you be interested in seeing some of that stuff? Cause I, I'm really considering recording it. Um, just adding another thing to my plate, but I just want to share like everything of my life and show you guys how beautiful like the backyard is. So like with the bathrobe and the tie, Grab your mask and give it a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. It's probably a good idea to wear gloves so you don't stain your hands, but whatever. I'm a tie dyer. I have dye on my hands. So I'm going to explain uh, the process of all of the ice during this rinse out process. So I die out on a sun porch and it's really cold in Oregon right now. So I take my projects into the house where it's nice and warm. This project being a heavy bathrobe, you know, started to get really wet with the ice and it, it got heavy and I did not want to move around a heavy tote and you know, run the risk of dropping it, tripping, spilling it, ruining the house, ruining the project. So I didn't get any footage of me doing the ice. So I ended up doing three heavy layers of ice. Um, and with every layer of ice, I added a new layer of soda ash. Now, I probably didn't need to do three layers of ice. I checked the back after the second round and it was fully saturated, but there was still a ton of undissolved dye so I thought mm, I'm just gonna do one last you know layer of ice just in case because I really want to make sure there's a lot of vibrancy 
a lot of time and energy has been put into this project so I want to make sure there's full saturation and then I let it batch for 48 hours after the final ice so this project took me a week well and if you count the week that I or almost a week that I let it dry probably took about two weeks all right now let's talk about the rinse out process you do it just like you would anything else you want to start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric in this case I don't think there's any possibility of it but you still want to go through the motions and then increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear and then from here I take it to the washing machine and I do however many hot water cycles is needed using Kirilon and I scoop up the water in the hot water cycle and I check it and when it begins to run clear then I know that I'm ready for my final hot water cycle using Milsoft and Milsoft brings softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process and then I put it in the dryer and we come back and we see our results well here it is guys here's our bathrobe after it's been washed and dried and doesn't Bella look so cute modeling it it turned out really pretty. I'm super happy with the vibrancy and the saturation is perfect. It's kind of hard to see the spiral because it's all wrapped up around her, but the spiral is there. I don't really know what other pattern I would do on this, you know, to really show a pattern. Uh, you know, I guess you could do a scrunch, but you know, why not just do a spiral? So it's, it really is pretty, but this is definitely going to be my bathrobe. And here are the slippers. So like I said, I kept them nice and dark. They still match the bathrobe, but hopefully they won't show the dirt. Let's talk about why this bathrobe is going to be mine. If you remember, I said that I'm choosing colors for this project that I like. That way, if it doesn't turn out, I can still wear it. It's covered in pilling badly. Uh, the seams are coming undone. The pocket is unraveling. It's just a really inferior product. I bought three from Amazon and I started with the most inexpensive out of the three and I'm glad that I did because I learned a lot. I'm going to link it in the description box and I highly recommend that you avoid this particular product. I just think it's really crappy and a lot of the reviews on Amazon say the same thing and I, I don't know why I didn't listen. I guess I thought maybe I'd be different but I'm not. And so I highly recommend that you avoid this particular set. Now, some of you might think that you can do better and not have the same results and more power to you, but I just say buyer beware. So what do you guys think of this bathrobe? Overall, I think it's really pretty. With a better product, I think you get better results. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel leave a thumbs up on this tutorial and then click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.